we'll do a seed shuffle here. And there we go. All right, so let's begin with the world map. I'm going to turn down the volume a little bit because I know my microphone is prone to trouble. Please bear with me. Okay, now we're going to do party selection. Um, a good rule of thumb is to always know your flags before you select your party. Because if you don't, then you could get into a lot of trouble. So given the flags, I'm going to go with a balance party to try and cover every aspect that I can of the characters. Fighter is very good early. He loses quite a bit of attack power late. But his defensive ability to tank physicals is still pretty good. So he's a good lead character. Black Belt is your offensive powerhouse late. Early, he's not very good at all. He doesn't start becoming really useful until about level 14 or 15. But thereafter, he's always worth it and he does exceptional damage late. A good strategy is always to try and overlevel him and just let him destroy the bosses late. White Mage is your all essential healer. White Mage also has a lot of useful buffs and can revive your party with life and life too. And I'm going to go Black Mage so I ensure that I have access to all the black spells. I could go Red Mage. However, Red Mage is a very good class, but there are times that he does not have access to the better end uh, white and black spells. So it's really about random. Usually if you go with Red Mage, it's a safe bet. But there are times that he becomes essentially uh, quite useless. Those times are rare, however. Red Mage has a lot of variety. Okay, so we're ready here. Uh, so just for geographic purposes, let's go to the map. And I'll show you where we are beginning at. Okay, so we're located at number one there. This is where the game starts. And our first trek is going to be here, to uh, number two. Which is the Temple of Fiends. That's where uh, you're going to check a couple chests there as quickly as you can. And then try and defeat Garland. So I'll elaborate on what I'm doing as we continue here. However, most of this is just going to be monkey see, monkey do.
First town we'll be coming into is Corneria. And all right, let's get this show on the road here. Obviously, you don't want to make that step there. Sometimes my D-pad is a bit finicky. So first thing you want to do is check black spells, because this is the best chance you have of finding something good. Obviously, there's nothing good there. Um, fog 2, I'll take that. That's a good buff early. So as you can see, Spell Shuffle is already in effect. And the spells found here are not very useful at all. We don't have a weapon for our fighter either, so this is going to be tricky early. This is good. Uh, I do want to buy that chainmail. It's inexpensive, and it will give him some defensive ability. Nunchucks or staff are good for your black belt early, but after about level 9, level 10, you're going to want to remove them. You want to go with the quick reset there. It doesn't seem to save much time at first, but... Over the course of an entire run, it will. So those wooden nunchucks are giving him the ability to one-hit KO these imps. Without that, he would not be able to do that. He'd be doing the same damage that the mages are right now. This is going well. The imps don't have any killer attacks, which is good. Oftentimes they can, and when that happens, oftentimes you have to get to the Temple of Fiends to grind. Okay, I need to take another look at the weapons here. Silver dagger is too expensive. Is anything else affordable here? Iron Shield, we'll take that. That'll help his defense a little bit. Uh, there were no spells that were useful. So I'm going to need some tents or cabins. There are none. Uh-oh. Okay, now this could be trouble. This could be a lot of trouble. I should buy heals. I should buy a few pairs. I'm going to have to prepare now unless I get lucky. I have to get really lucky. Because I have no tents. Probably should do a little grind here, since I know the imps are not a threat. And I might actually have to end up buying that silver dagger. So normally at this point you would be headed for the temple already. You would probably have found an elemental spell or perhaps fade that targets all the enemies and wipe them out very quickly. However, again, since I have spell shop on, uh, the spells were not very good at all. Hopefully in the next town we will find a better spell selection. Okay, I'm going to have to buy that silver dagger.
Should have enough of what I need. Okay, still a bit risky to go it right now, but again, this is speed hacks. In an actual race, this is what I would be doing. Probably should have took that battle, but again, saving time. We have no tents either, so that's another thing. Uh, I don't really want to fight that much because if we do end up getting wiped here, we're in trouble. Okay, pause time real quick here to bring up the temple map. Okay, the chests on the left side should always be checked right away because there could be a key item in them. If you forget them, then you're going to lose time if there's a key item in them. The chests on the right are key locked, meaning you cannot access the chests on the right hand side until you have found the crown and then completed the crown subquest and obtained the key. So ignore the chests on the right to start, always check the chests on the left to start before you go to Garland. Okay, great axe. That's a good find. That's better than the silver dagger. I can give that to my black mage now. That's actually a really useful find against Garland. It will give our fighter much better damage. And here we go. Strategy for Garland is straightforward. If you have spells, use them and kill him as quick as you can. He can sometimes get some powerful spells that wipe you out. So usually the best strategy is just to try and go straight at him. I want to split here and I don't have my splits, I just have a time, so I gotta remember not to split until the end. So, uh, Great Axe, yes, that was a very useful find here. That's uh, If we find a silver sword, we can sell the Great Axe and hopefully get some gold out of it. So you want to talk to the king there, make sure you get the ship and the bridge, and make sure you talk to her as well to get the loot, which is required late. We're going to do one more check here. Nothing was useful. I'm going to buy a couple more heals and peers here. Hopefully we don't get stoned. Those softs are pricey. Okay, now let's take a look at the world map again. Once you have defeated Garland, you get the bridge, which takes you to that area where you can find number three and number four on the map here, from number one. So usually I will go straight to number four, but given that I have not found any attack all enemy spells yet, I think I'm going to go to number three, check the chests, and hope that I find an item such as the Mage Staff or the Thor Hammer. I usually do that, because the pirates can be trouble, and my chances of finding one of those spells in Provoka are quite low right now. Provoka, which is number four, that's going to be the next town we visit. Now, I don't have any tents either, so this is going to be risky. So we'll be heading north to three, and then we're going to be heading east to number four. And you get this scene here, which is annoying. You just want to tap the button as fast as you can.